Well, hi guys, hope you're keeping well. This is a um, continuing video of my llama repair. The Haribo llama that threw a blade. Uh, getting along with it quite well. I've got all the radio in it. Uh, it's all working. I've got the swash plate all kind of working. I've got the lights working. The thing I've got to do is this one here, normally, I mean, I've lost it now, but it had a hole there, and it had like a little plate on there. Let's see if I can get this old canopy. Oh, I can't reach it. Let's get this one. Now, see, this is the, the damaged one. So if you can see, I've got it caught up on my wrist. You can see that was what was in the top. So that sat on there, sort of like that. And then on top of here, you can just see a little bit of it left. There was a little red around red sort of like um light like a, a, a really nice looking little beacon was on the top of there um so i'm hoping to have a look around see if i can find one and also i've got to do all this lining and you know and the red cross on the front i mean that takes forever uh when you bought the helicopter it came with um a deco set which had these in already curved but what i use is uh, the model technics uh trim tape or vinyl if you want to cut it up and you can sort of bend it round and you know you can do that it's not too bad a job um yeah oh and also i've got an aerial here somewhere oh yeah i always put this little aerial back on it i think it looks pretty trick so where that tube goes up now i've got to put a light well not a light i've got to put a hole in there exactly where that is and then i'll make up a little plastic card plate to go on there and i've got to look around and try and find myself uh, a little red light to go on there you know i've seen a few you get them on boats and stuff like that so you know hopefully uh, i'll be able to find one but the fitting of these screens now it's not an easy job as you probably know anything involving plastic that's flimsy and breaks easy it's, it's not like alexian car body you know they can crack really easily so you've got to be very very careful when you cut them out and they're very expensive I mean, it, what gets me, if you could just buy the plastic glass, I think it's only about £28, something like that, but they're always out of stock. So you end up having to buy the whole lot. So you have to end up buying this and the screen and, uh, and the cabin. I mean, it, it costs you like £68. I've got like three sets of these now, which I don't use for that, but this one's painted. And I always use that because it's got the decals on and stuff like that, but you... If you could just buy the screen, it'd be so nice, you know. And I mean, it's not a perfect mould in this one. Uh, in the light, you can't see it now, but there's like a, a line and the moulding that comes around there. And there's quite a big fleck in the other side. And it's all kind of pulled over one one side, the mouldings. They're normally like that, you know. Now, when you fit these, they've got an actual, where the screws go in, they've got like little dimples or marks where you should drill the holes. But... Whatever you do, don't rely on them because they're in the wrong place. They're never in the right place. And if you do that, you can muck up your canopy. So what you've really got to do, uh, how I do it, is I cut out, you've got cut lines on a canopy, which is this. So you have to get a pair of Kosho scissors or, you know, the curved scissors, which I use. So you get it sort of roughly to that shape. But be very careful in these corners here. You know, you, you can, it ever so easy for it to run and crack up there. And, you know, you've got to be really, really careful how you, how you put this on. That's what gets a bit closer. Now, if you look at this side, can you see it's got like a little ridge in there? Now, what you want, you want the glass to sit in that ridge. You don't want it to go, you know, it's very easy to sort of just, oh, yeah, that'll do and keep it over there. But you've got to take your time and you keep working it back and you've got to trim that to fit in. So you've got, the glass has got to fit in there. Now, what I did was cut it out roughly and then I just put a couple of pieces of tape around it, you know, just to secure it. So there's no holes in it so far. So all I've got is a loose floppy canopy and it goes all over the place. So I just put it over there, but it's cut out roughly and I just put 
I cut a piece of the tape on there all the way around just to hold it in place. Now, when you do that, you can see how far out the holes are that they actually dimple in, in the, um, the canopy itself. So what I do then is I go around with a Sharpie and I try and mark out right along the closest I can to that line, which is got to just fit inside there. There we are, you? And just fit inside that line there. It's a little recess. See a little recess? You want it to fit in there. So um, while it's on there, what I do, I actually drill the holes. So while it's taped on and it's fitting, you know, reasonably okay, I actually drill it to hold it on there. Don't matter if it's overlapping a little bit at a time because you can always trim this up afterwards to get a really nice fit. Now I've got um, a Dremel which has got like a little, uh, how can you call it? Oh, I are. I've got it here. I've just bought one of these. Uh, this goes on the cable to the Dremel. A fantastic thing, you can hold it like a pen. You know, it makes life so much easier. Now, in the end, this tip is like a diamond tip and it's got a point on it. So it's so easy, I just went sort of where the hole was, because you can see where they are, and just went in gently with this you know, don't use a drill, whatever you do. If you use like a normal drill, it will it might drill the hole, but it might crack. And, you know, you need a kind of sort of Dremel or something like that. And the other thing with this, it won't leave, it leaves a smooth edge. Now, these are prone to cracking, you know, all helicopters have got vibration. And they're prone to cracking around the holes and all stuff like that. So you've got to, you know, you've just got to spend your time on this because they're an expensive thing and you want to keep it looking nice so this is what you have to do you have to you know you want yourself a diamond drill or failing that if you haven't got one of these what i used to do is drill a very small hole and i used to use a needle file and just fold a hole if you try and drill it you know it might look all right but after a couple of flights you'll get little cracks because where you drilled it it cracks round by the glass or the plastic and eventually it starts sort of starring off when you'll get a little crack so if you've got something really smooth, I mean, this thing was fantastic. It just went through them, lovely, you know. And they, if you make the holes, they're two and a half millimeter self tap screws, and they've got like a, quite a pan head on them, which is quite nice. So if you drill sort of roughly three mil, it gives you a little bit of leeway as well to, to work the screws. Now, that's what, what I did. So you screw that on, so it's all screwed on now, and it's a little bit big. You've marked your sharp out, so you know it's all gonna fit on there. So what you do after that, you take it all off again and you get your little Dremel or you can use a sandpaper on like a piece of wood or a card or if you want to use a you know like a woman's nail file thing something like that and just keep working this back and just keep trying and trying it I mean if I turn it around keep getting it to fit oh, I've got too much on this table uh, just keep trying to get it to go flush in with that little piece there all the way around all around the top and on the corners on all the edges don't go in there sharp what I did I used a little Dremel tool and put a radius so all the edges put a nice radius in there because if you go up there with your scissors and it's a sharp corner it will crack it will sort of after a little while you'll get a hairline crack start going up here so put a radius in all the corners and then when you're sure that it fits okay and it's all nice like that, what I do is I get some wet and dry, put it in the sink with some soapy water and wet and dry all the edges so they're dead smooth. So you've got no, you know, don't give it any reason to crack because when you cut it with scissors, it still leaves tiny little cracks, you know, and it will run along. So basically that, that's the way to do it. You've got to take your time on this. You know, you don't want to rush it, but you want it to fit nice and flush and don't kind of have all the screws sort of forcing and pulling it. You know, if it's too tight here, take a little bit more off here. Or you can make the hole a little bit bigger so you've got a little bit more movement. You want it to just sort of throw it on there and it just to fit lovely and just nip the screws up. You don't want it pulling tight. You know, you, you really want a nice flush fit all the way around. And that should last you, as long, long as you don't have a blow fly off, should last you for some time. Now, I've got... As you can see, all the swash plating and everything, and I've rebuilt. Oh, God. Right, and I've 
I've rebuilt their heads sort of like only loosely because I'm still waiting for a feather, feathering spindle. I can't talk properly because one of my front teeth has fell out. I don't know if you noticed in my last couple of videos, I can't say me Fs, you know, not unless I put my finger over the hole in my tooth. So, uh, excuse me if my Fs are sort of like leaking a bit, but that's the way it is. Now, what I've done is I've straightened the flyby out myself. Takes some time, but I quite enjoy doing that. And I have straightened the feathering spindle. Now, after all this work, do I really want to run a feathering shaft or spindle that I have straightened out? Now, I've done it before and it's been fine. And, you know, it feels great, it's not moving, it all looks nice and true and that, but I'm hoping that Midlands. Now, Trevor said to me, they are getting some new stock of her oboe parts in, but how long, I don't know. So, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm going to give it a, a week or so, or a couple of weeks, and see if it's going to come in. These these are all brand new blade grips. Uh, new bearings in it. Uh, what else have I done? There's new bearings in here. I've taken these off because I've got some new decals to go over them. Um... You know, I think the the actual uh, fly bar will be okay because I spent a lot of time straightening that out. Um, you know, and it doesn't really do a lot. Uh, I've balanced it, everything like that. It all seems fine. But I've got new damper rubbers in there, new bearings. Everything in there is new. All I'm waiting for now is the last bit of the jigsaw puzzle is the fly bar. And then we can put that on there and we can sort of hopefully give it a fly now the other thing i've replaced all the links and the rods and everything on here so all these are going to be new or they are new the rods are new i've got a new set of balls going because the early ones were like brass uh and the later ones are like an, an alley i don't know if that's so they wear out quicker and you have to buy more i don't know but the brass ones used to wear you know, fairly quick as well, because doing quite a lot of work. The undercarriage, right. You know, I said to you I couldn't get, I couldn't get the white ones, uh, white ones, I couldn't get the red ones. All I could get was white ones. So, you know, you've got to do what you do and try and make the best of it. So I bought a pair of white ones. Um, the rear one I've got on here now is the original red one. And the front one is one that I've painted in, again, this Spectra, you've got to read that word there, which says resistant. Now, I wouldn't say this is fuel proof, and I wouldn't say it's really resistant, you know. This this used to be Spectra paint, and you used to be able to use this, paint something with it, and it'll last you a lifetime. But what they've done is obviously something in there they've taken out because it's, you know, not environmentally friendly or whatever. And now we've got all this stuff that I told you about, the barbecue black paint and everything, which don't really work. And, you know, to be honest with you, this is just like a normal paint, you know. Uh, I, I really don't like it. But I've painted this one in it and I've repainted the rear um, thin, but I'm not happy with that bin. I might buy a new one. But so I painted this, and it's not come out too bad. But what I thought of doing, because you know I build boats as well. Now, when I build my boats and I do the decks, I mean all my boats, my well, most of them are nitro. What I do when I build them and I do the decks, I actually paint them or the decks. I do them with a clear polyurethane varnish. It's just a, you know, it's a cheap urethane, polyurethane varnish, and you put it on the decks, and you could you could pour nitro fuel on it, and it doesn't mark, it doesn't do any damage to it whatsoever. And I've managed to sort of buy some, it's in a spray form. So this is going to be my first time. I'm going to spray this when it comes through. I'm going to spray this with polyurethane clear varnish and see if it withstands the fuel. If it does, then I'll be happy because I really want to paint this again and this because you know the paint it, it's done a fair bit of work this helicopter and I would like to paint it and the truss as well you know the, the truss is 
you know, long, it's old and it's dusty and it really needs a repaint. It needs to come apart and uh, give it a repaint. But at the moment, I just kind of want to get it in one piece because I've got so many projects going. But the other thing I've got coming, which I wasn't going to buy, but this is the, like, the dummy engine that sits on the back here. When I bought this, I did quite a bit of more, sort of more detailing on it, really. I had a, a look at the real ones, and these kind of sit up here, but I have a lot of these staves that go up, and I can't remember how it goes now, but you have, like, these pieces go up. Uh, there's another piece that goes up to the front here. You know, there's these weren't on the helicopter. I put them on myself. Um, and I also made... This is the front part. This actually goes... On there like that uh, and I made all these pipes and I made these little brass unions so I had all pipes that went into the other side of it and stuff like that now this has taken uh, a, as you can see it's broken if I had that part it would have been nice to actually repair it but I haven't got that part so it's you know this whole lot it, it comes in as like a unit and it's only cheap I think it's about eight and a half quid or something and so I thought, well, I'll, I'll buy a new one. And I, you know, I might keep that back and just replace this one and, and paint it and put all the little unions on there and a the pipe. I've got to find some new O-ring because it's all perished. Uh, what I did on this, I actually made... I was looking at the real one and they've got like a disc brake on the rotor. Uh, where are we? Yeah, so I, I kind of made this sort of go into there and then this goes on there like that and that went up well that's down that way so this little disc brake is kind of like the real thing and this went up in here so you, you had this this part here going up into that like that you know to make it look really scale I think this this little rod went onto there I can see the hole there now so it kind of went onto there like that so it was all supported and then the dummy engine went on the back of that so it's got quite a nice lot of detail Whoops, that's gone. Anyway, uh, so I might get one of... Now I've got one of these coming, but I might use that because I've, I actually put the mesh in here as well and it's kind of quite rough and the colour's not bad for the, for the outlet, so it'll save me a lot of time, but all I've got to do is put that front piece on. Now, the other thing with these Herobos, which is a bit of a nightmare, is the fuel tank. Now, it's got a new fuel tank in there. But it's really hard to see the fuel. When you're flying, you, you're always thinking about how much fuel you've got in the tank because you can't see it. And, you know, I've got a timer on my transmitter, but because I'm a bit deaf over the years of motorbikes and working in a factory and all that, I can't hear it. So what I had before was this little Tamiya uh, fuel indicator. And I had that on the back here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, can you? Yeah, so it was on the back there and it used to, when it was empty, it used to light up, you know, and when you filled it up, it went out and as the fuel went down, um, it used to, you know, it used to light up. So with no fuel in it, well, not used to, I used to sort of um, judge it to about 20 mil up in a tank, so I still had a little bit in reserve. So I had that sort of going under there so you could see, you know, when the lights come on, you knew you was low on fuel. But the only problem with it is that this was made for a car. Well, it's in a helicopter. It it sort of swashes around a bit and it gives you like false readings. So when you're kind of banking in a turn, sometimes a light will come on and something will go out. And it, it kind of, you know, it's a bit hit and miss, really. Uh, if you're just hovering, it comes on and it's fine. So I, I weren't sure where to put that on. When, when I put my new tank in, because the, the tank was fine, but the... The rubber bun that goes in there was all perished. And when I was holding it last, before it threw the blade, it was actually leaking fuel somewhere. I don't know where, but I put all new pipes on it and stuff like that. So I haven't put this on this time. You know, I, 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 might, I may well do, but you've got to drill into the tank and, you know, it's a bit of a palaver. Um, but I'm not really convinced that it works that well, you know. I bet it's sort of come on once. But, you, it, you know, what I've got to do is either wear my hearing aids so I can hear my transmitter, or put some sort of big sort of clock or readout on the top of my transmitter, like a lot of my old mates do, so they can read it. But, you know, it's not my old Futaba transmitter. It's not like, you know, it, where is it? 
it's a 10C, you know, I mean, it's not like uh, a modern transmitter, you know, it does what it should do and that's all I'm happy with, you know, but if you had like a DX8 or something like that, it actually vibrates in your hand, so, you know, you can actually feel when, the, you know, your timer's up. But I've set all the timers and I can never hear this, it's so quiet, you know, but uh, that's another story. So, this is kind of where we are with this. Tomorrow, I'm hoping that this is going to come. You know, um, and I can get that on the top there. Uh, all the undercarriage is fine, and I'll probably spend the rest of the day putting the white lines around the canopy. Is that going to fall off? No. So, yeah, put the white lines, you know, similar to this one. You know, I've got to put all that on. I don't know if I've got enough tape. I might have, I might have to buy some more, but I painted the interior it was old so I've redone all the interior I've done the seats all the uh, console and stuff like that and I've actually glued my pilot who's an action man I've actually glued his legs together because one of them was broken uh, and I've glued his hands on the collective and you know that's about as far as I've got today um, I have found uh, a set of blades uh, some wooden blades. I've got actually two sets of wooden. So I'm not a fan of them, but you know, I'm going to try try them on wooden blades first. Uh, and if that doesn't work, I've got a set of uh, carbons. Oh yeah, I've also got a strobe light on the back here. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, that's, let's just turn this round. Now, I know it doesn't look that bright because I've got like lots of lights on in here. But when that's flying, um, if it's just a little bit dust, that is so bright, you know, it's it's one of these things that it sort of charges up, you can hear it ticking, so it goes like, remember like the old flashlights on the cameras, they used to sort of wind up and go whoop, and then they used to flash, and that's that's what it's like, it's got quite a charge on that, and you can alter the speed, you can have it fast or slow, you know, and it, it works really well. So, you know, with all the lights on, this is a lovely thing. You can fly this sort of around about dusk, and which is normally a helicopter no no because you know get uh, lose orientation and stuff. But you can fly this really kind of quite late in the evening. And I've got the lights on the transmitter and with them, you know, them lights flashing like that, and with the strobe on. You can see I've got one underneath here as well. It's quite a, a nice thing to you know fly around, and uh, it's a beautiful, stable thing, a uh, lovely thing to fly. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to sign out now. Um, you know, I'm waiting for my gearbox for my truck, which I think, did anyone see it on the floor? There uh, she is, waiting for the gearbox. Um, I've also got an Aprilia 125 I've got to build, but that's sort of a bit down, further down the line. But uh, yeah, this is what I've got, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.